fact that it's, it will produce, it will take down big rock and produce something that is drivable at a, roughly a, a third or a quarter of the cost of having to bring down in a cushion of crushed rock is a major cost advantage. Well, I guess what we found out is, is the crusher is the easiest part of the operation. It runs along pretty smoothly. There's no problems with it. The hardest part is the graders, and then behind that is the finished blading and the water trucks go on. We have a lot of roads like this, particularly on the Rio Grande, where we have material in place where this would work very well. We can now recover what was once a wasted resource, and that's the oversized rock that typically lines uh, ditches or li lies in uh, windrows alongside the road. An hour to drive from the bottom up to here before we did the road work on here and now made it in about 15 minutes. So it's providing an extremely good road surface. Chiricahua Mountains right now and we're doing road restoration on the Onion Saddle Pinery Road and this road has uh, not had this kind of maintenance in probably 20 or 25 years and the road surface had uh, become cobbles and, and uh, real uncomfortable road to drive for an arterial road. We uh, were fortunate to find a mobile rock crusher that uh, we were able to bring up here and start uh, a process that uh, this is the first time it's happened in the country. Uh, finding is that it will crush anything that we have in this area from the uh, alluvial fan material which is the round cobbles, the river stone, up into uh, the material up on top here which is fairly fractured and easy to break up. So hardness has not been a problem at all. We, uh, we pull material from the ditches and we scarify the roadbed, try and scarify it down about six inches and uh, utilize all the material up to 12 inches in diameter, including 12 inches. And then uh, windrow that into the middle of the roadway. There we uh, uh, add water in order to keep the dust down and provide uh, uh, moisture to the soil, trying to get the optimum moisture content. At that point, uh, we uh, bring the crusher in and uh, it makes its pass. And in one pass, it takes all of that material and crushes it into between one inch and one and a half inch minus. It runs along pretty smoothly. There's no problems with it. What takes the, the hard work and the coordination is keeping everything else around it running. We've got two motor graders running. What we have to do first thing in the morning is have both of them go ahead of the crusher and rip the road and form the windrow. And get far enough ahead to where the crusher has plenty of work to do so he doesn't end up stopping. The road's very narrow, it's windy. The biggest problem actually is water. It's very dry, so it's the driest time of the year, and getting water has been a real challenge. We've got the public traveling on the road, so we have to stop them for upwards of an hour at a time. But most of the people who had to stop have been pretty friendly, and um, most of them are bird watchers. They stop and watch the birds while they wait. And uh, I guess they're, they realize that they're out in the forest, and they shouldn't be in a big hurry, and they relax and enjoy it. Right, this project is on the Canales River Road, which uh, serves a primary access from a state highway to a federal highway. It's a through road. The reason why we chose this project, of course, one was the fact that the material lend itself to this type of an operation. We felt that it would work. The road basically was not even graveled. Gravel was all worn out, what little there was. And we felt that we could get a large amount of work done at a fairly reasonable cost. You can stand right, right beside the machine while it's working. You know, you can use it on a main road and, and still route traffic right by the machine while it's working. And with the exception of the uh, crusher itself, it can be done with equipment that we all have and that the counties have, so there's no specialized equipment needed other than the, the uh, crusher itself. So I think the potential for this type of a project is uh, substantial in, on most of our forests here in Colorado. What we have here, this is the uh the part of the machine that does all the work, it's a rotating drum. It rotates at uh, about 1,000 RPM. The machine uh, has a 225 horsepower CAT engine and a 3 to 1 uh, transmission reduction. This drum will rotate up, and these hammers lift the material up against uh, the anvils up on top and crush it. And the, uh, if you take a look in there closely, you can see the distance 
between the uh, hammer and the anvil, the, the uh, rock, crushed rock, has to be that size before it'll come out the back of the machine. Different than other equipment, you have intense amount of uh, repairs, intense amount of maintenance that's needed with this. Uh, you, you have to have uh, service trucks with it that are equipped, welders, torches, uh, just the whole nine yards. It, it requires a lot of uh, heavy maintenance and dedication by the uh, employees. And it's about uh, a couple hours a day at least, and uh, that's changing the hammers and that's checking over different items that may have uh, broken. Okay. The crusher generally undergoes some serious vibration as it goes through the rock and crushes it, and uh, that just tends to pull everything apart over time. When, once the material goes through the crusher, we can expect with new hammers approximately uh, two inches and minus. And uh, as the hammers begin to wear, we'll get up to four inch minus material as the hammers just begin to drop. And uh, we usually don't go any more now because by that point, we're getting too close to that rotor and, we're tr and we always are trying to protect that rotor. We're out here today on Dixie Mountain Lookout Road for a mobile rock crushing demonstration. Um, Dixie Mountain Lookout Road is on the Plumas National Forest in California. This project has been a partnership between the San Dimas Technology and Development Center, uh, Region 5, our regional office, and the Plumas National Forest. Um, it's a single lane road, fairly steep gradient, going up to Dixie Mountain Lookout. Impossible road for us to maintain. With the cobbles and the donickers in the road, we couldn't blade it anymore. We were looking at almost the total reconstruction if we wanted to do any improvements to this road. Plus the cost of bringing in material to improve this road uh, with the minimal traffic that's on it, we did, it didn't warrant the cost. I'm Tim Pasquale with the Cordo National Forest, equipment operator out of Tucson, Arizona. Um, here working on the Plumas National Forest, Dixie Mount Lookout Road. Uh, this project is a little different than what we have worked on in previous projects uh, due to the fact it's a level two type road. It's uh, not as wide as what we're used to. It's a little different, whereas uh, the wind rows are a little more intensive in terms of building them. It uh, takes a little more time. It's, it can be very tedious, but uh, running a crusher, you always got to be aware of the changes at the level of the road. Uh, you got to constantly be aware of the RPMs and, and and your power unit on your machine, keeping them keeping them constantly working together. Uh, ideal size is anything below 16 inch diameter and lower because of the size of the opening that it feeds into the machine. It does an amazingly good job of breaking up this type of uh, very coarse rocky material that uh, has been a real maintenance problem in the past on this particular road. The particular rock on this project is a, it's a mixture of a volcanic rock and, and a, uh, and a uh, ashy matrix. Uh, it's, a, it's a fairly hard rock. The machine seems to be keeping up at a production rate at it, comparable to what we, they've seen on other projects and what we saw down on the lower part of this project in some of the softer rocks. So it, it seems capable of handling very, very hard rock. My overall impression of of this machine is that you know it's an ex excellent tool in a in a fairly specific type of application where you've got you know if you've got roads like like this one was where it's very bony if you've got roads that have a, a lot of coarse material rock on it it's ideal because it can give you a, a surfacing that's that's not a not as high a standard as a crushed agate but it's a suitable surfacing that's a lot better than a very rocky surface for about a half to a third the cost. One of the reasons we picked this road as a demonstration is it was a road that was extremely difficult to maintain. The lookout who drove up and down here, I talked to him when we were up looking at it and considering this road, and he just said, I'm beating my truck apart. And this was a road that was so bony that you just, you could not maintain it. So the beauty of this, of this tool on this road is it'll come in here and take a section crush that rock down so that you have a road that is maintainable. We have a lot of remote roads that are, you know, a long way from a commercial rock source. And when you can take a road like this and make it maintainable for $10,000 a mile range, you've, you've got a tool that will work. 
before I came, I didn't really have any idea what to expect. You know, I kind of expected what you'd see dumped out of a belly dump, you know, nice graded rock. But of course, we knew that wasn't going to happen. The real test of this road is going to be two years from now. When you come back here, has it compacted down? Has it maintained itself? You know, are we able to maintain a drivable surface? I mean, this is an area that does not get extremely heavy rainfall, or else these fines would have washed off this road already. Uh, so I think we've picked an ideal site. I, I think the future of this technology really comes into having the technology somewhere in the region. We have 18 forests here that all have a few roads that could benefit from this type of technology. Mm -hmm.